What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna be installing some subframe braces on my 66 Mustang. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us are familiar with how the, the way this, the chassis is and the frame on this car, that there's kind of a, almost a disconnect from the front frame and the rear of the car, and we need something to connect those to, to improve the chassis stiffness. Uh, this is something that I installed on a previous Mustang that I had. Uh, I, in fact, I did the same bars, and I partially chose these because of price, uh, unlike a lot of you guys, uh, you know, I work on a budget and I'm trying to, to get to as close as I can to, uh, you know, upgrading the performance of the car, but I'm not, I'm not able to spend, you know, five times the money on these kind of bars. And really in the end, the, the, the most important part is that they do their job. Um, there's a couple different designs, the way that they attach from the front frame to the rear frame. Um, there's no argument. I mean, I, I totally agree that, that welding them on is the best way to go. This particular bar, you can bolt on with these holes here or weld on. Um, and in this time, I'm going to weld these on. Uh, the last time I, I put these on my previous car, I just bolted them on. They are an improvement, but they're just not as good as if they were welded in place. So this time I'm gonna skip that bolt, that bolting step and just weld them in place to where they go. Uh, really, the, the installation of these is the same as I had done before, but uh, this time, Let's get them welded on, get them in place, and then uh, and it should be a little bit better for the car. So uh, real quick, let's go take a look at the hardware that we're gonna use to install these bars. So here's the included hardware that comes when you buy this particular kit. Uh, what you get are two rear, this goes through the rear leaf springs and through the rear mount, the other end of this bar down here over here. And uh, you can get new bolts here. I just redid the leaf springs and I put new bolts in there, so I don't think I'm gonna use those. I might just save these for another time. And then the other parts that you get here, you get two sets of bolts that go up front. You know, these are supposed to go in these holes if you guys choose to, to bolt these on the front. Uh, and then these go also in the back with the, with the, rear, with the rear bar. But I'm, I'm not gonna use these because I'm gonna weld everything in place. Uh, the only bolts that I would use actually are these, but like I said, I'm gonna use the ones that are in the car um, because they're already there. So, and then the last thing I want to point out, the instructions for this um, are, are really, they're poor. Um, well, this, this is torn here, it's kind of hard to see the picture, but trying to, to decipher what they're saying here in this picture is difficult if, you, uh, if you're trying to do this you know, just by going off the instructions. The wording isn't too bad, but the pictures are difficult to follow. So I'll show you how we do this in the video and, and we're not gonna need this part. So really, in the end, oh, I'm not gonna need any of this hardware uh, I just need to put the bars in place. So what you want to do now, let's go ahead and get the car jacked up. And I do want to talk about the points uh, where you jack the car up uh, because uh, the rear points, you need to get out of the way of where this bar is going to go, but you can't lift up at the axle and I'll show you why. So let's get that done. Now that we got the car jacked up, this notice where I put the jack here in the rear uh, relative to the bolt for the rear leaf. The reason why is you don't want, if you've got a jack stand like this, you don't want to you, know, you don't want the leaf spring resting on that because you're going to take this bolt on this. You need to be able to, to manipulate the leaf spring a little bit to get that bolt back in. So we don't want to put the jack stands underneath the axle because it'll put pressure on these leafs and you won't be able to get that bolt out. So you do need to support it on the frame. And then where this is, it's not going to be in the way of where the, the rear subframe base connection attaches here. So this is a good spot for it. Same thing on the other side. And then for the front, this is where we're going to be attaching the end of the subframe brace. So anything forward of these holes here, all the way that, it doesn't matter where you put the jack. I just put it on the front here just so it's out of my way. But uh, we're only going to use just the, the back part of this here for the end of the subframe brace. And looking from the other side of the rear frame here, you can see this is the bolt that we're going to get access to for the leaf spring. So that uh, end of the subframe brace is going to fit up inside here and we need to get that out of the way. On the front frame rail, only on the passenger side, I've got this, this spring here for the parking brake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch out on the subframe brace where this is so I can go ahead and service, service this if I ever need to. I'm not gonna cut out where the holes are, although I'm not gonna bolt this in, but just to show you guys what you need to cut out on the subframe brace to, to, to clear this. I also, we wanna mock this up. You're gonna put the subframe brace up here and we're gonna mark with a paint pen where this is gonna, the subframe brace is gonna basically sit so I know what I need to grind clean so that when I weld, I'm, clean, I'm welding to good clean metal. So I'm gonna grab the driver's side uh, subframe piece and what I'm just gonna hold it in place for now, just this hole here that where we're gonna put the bolt through, just kind of line it up right about where it is on the, the bolt 
for the leaf spring and just kind of hold it in place because we need to go to the other end and mark with a paint pen what I need to clear up on the on the sheet metal. Now I can't push this up all the way because this spring is in the way. So I'm gonna what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna kind of cut away, you know, pretty much this off of this piece off of the, the sheet metal of the subframe base. But then because of where this is sitting, I basically need to clean everything in this area just for the weld. I don't need to clean all the way over here, just where I'm going to weld. So, you know, up along here and then down underneath this way here and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So you can see that I have now notched out that edge of this bracket here to clear this spring and I traced my line all the way around. So, and I also, while you're at it, took the paint off the edge of this thing so when I weld to it I'm not, you know, chewing up that paint. So, um, when you put this up here, you know, it's going to be a snug fit and you may have to tap it up in there with a, maybe with a mallet or something like that just because it's going to be because this thing is actually trapezoidal shape um, it's wider up here than it is down here and so when you put that in there um, it's going to kind of squeeze on there so uh, just be aware of that there's nothing wrong with your subframe brace when you when you get there so now I need to clean this up and get this uh, this undercoating out of the way so that I can weld to it All right, now that we got this exposed down to bare metal all the way around here and up to the other side, we can go back to the back now and start taking that bolt out of the rear leaf and getting everything ready to install this uh, the passenger side support brace. Before we take this bolt out, it's probably not a bad idea to put the jack underneath the spring plate there on the axle so you can kind of support this leaf as you go ahead and get this bolt out of here. Now that was really easy for me to undo that, you know, taking this nut off of here because I recently did these. But if you guys are dealing with taking this bolt out for the first time, you may <laughs> have a lot of work ahead of you as far as you have, may have to go as far as cutting the bolt off in between on each side of the leaf here. I had to do that when I replaced these leaf sting springs. So just a heads up that this might not be that easy for you guys. Now as we set this up inside here, you may find that this, the placement of this tab doesn't allow you to put this hole right in line with the hole here in the frame. Um, and you may have to just bend this tab down just a little bit to get this hole to go up. And in this case here, let me see what I can do. Um, yeah, it's just not quite getting there. So I'm gonna bend this real quick and see if that helps out. All right, there you can kind of see this is not a 90 degree corner anymore. So let's see if this is good enough. All right, I was able to get it in there. Now I got to finish lining this up and you may see how I can kind of push on the leaf a little bit. You may need to do that because I've got this leaf supported with the jack, uh, the jack stand back there that makes it so this thing is not, you know, the full weight of it's not coming down. So try moving this around and wiggling this bolt in and see if you can get it to work. And we're most of the way. So now we've got threads coming out here. If you can't quite get this thing to fully seat down, well, we're pretty close. Now we can go ahead and put the nut on here and this end is uh, secured. We can go back and we'll tighten this stuff up here after we get everything in place. Now on the other end here, you can see how I can kind of position this in place. So this is where you could put uh, a jack, a floor jack underneath here and just kind of push it up in place before you get the welder out and then you can just tack everything in. <laughs> All right, because my welds are ugly and I don't like to show that part, I went ahead and welded it up and then I spray painted it. I just put some some of this uh, Rust-Oleum paint primer black stuff on here just to protect this exposed metal. And uh, so now we're good there. Um, yes, those welds are ugly, but uh, it is better than the bolts that would have gone in there if I would have done that right. So I'm gonna go back to the end 
tighten up that other side and then we need to move to the driver's side and do the same thing over there. And just like the passenger side, I, I outlined with the yellow pen where I need to grind off the center coating to get the bare metal ready for the welding. The weld bead that was on top of this plate here, you know, even after bending this tab for the driver's side, it was still in the way. So I just ground it out. And I'm just gonna hit it with some paint to just to protect that exposed metal. So yeah, that's good. Now we can put it in the car. You know, and just like the other side, you're just gonna have to work the bolt in. Sometimes you're just gonna have to thread it in all the way to get it to go all the way. Also, you know, if you may find that your mufflers might be in the way of your bolts, so you have to be mindful of that. And then if you have to manipulate this bar at all just to get that bolt to line up through the hole and then into the frame here. So just a little bit of patience, but you'll get it. And and here we are, look, I'm just working my way through to get this bolt seated all the way. And once we get this done, we'll get the nut on there and then we can go to the other end and start getting it welded. And again, just like the other side, now we've got this jack. You know, we push this up all the way as far as you can go. And really, when the top of this bracket bottoms out here underneath the car, that's obviously as far as you can go. And just use this jack just to hold it in place. We'll get it all welded up. And then I'll, uh, I'll grind down the large beads that I can't weld on. And then uh, spray paint it. And then we'll be good to go. <laughs> okay, just like the other side. Got it all welded up, ground off some of the big beads, and uh, painted it up so it would hide all my crappy welds. Again, we won't look at the other side. Anyways, all right, so that's it. That's welded in place, guys. And everything's bolted up and tightened down there on both sides. We can go ahead and drop the car. All right, guys. That is bars installed. Um, so what I use for... I just have just a little cheap Lincoln, you know, wire feed welder. It's not, I think I paid 100, maybe 150 bucks for it at the pawn shop a couple years ago. It's not exciting. It's not a great welder, but it welds. And I'm not a great welder, but I can weld. So I was able to make it work. I think welding these things on is a better option. If you guys have the ability to get a buddy that can weld or take it to even like a muffler shop, they may be willing to do that for you versus some other kind of car shop. Take it to them, bolt, you know, even if you bolt it in to get the car there and then they can just weld it in from there and you can remove the bolts if you want or whatever you want to do. I recommend welding them in. I should have done that on my last car. In fact, I sold my last car before I got a chance to get them welded in. So I never got a chance to finish that up, but I wanted to do it this time. So they're welded in, good to go. Also that bracket in the back there where, you know, it bolts through the, the um, leaf spring and that little tab bracket that I had to bend down this driver's side one was worse. I had to bend it even more and kind of finagle it around. And, and I don't know if it has to do with the manufacturing of these, of these subframe braces. Maybe the location on my frame. Maybe there's some buildup, you know, metal been tweaked or something. I don't know. But I did have to, you know, make it work, as it were, um, on, on the driver's side. A little easier on the passenger side. But it worked. And I got it bolted in. Everything's tightened up. I got those rear bolts tightened. The front side's welded in, painted up, good to go. I'm done. So what are we going to see from these kinds of braces? They're going to keep, not keep, they're going to help the car in the twisting part like here between the front and the rear twisting like this. Not as much as this part, but this part. And it's, a, it's just something that we're going to add in combination with the other stiffening parts. I mean, I've got stiffer springs front and rear, um, but I've got this export brace. They've got the Monte Carlo bar. Got that front sway bar that I just recently did. Now we've got those subframe braces. Now I need to do something in the rear. And I think I'm gonna do a pan hard bar in the rear for this car. So just adding all that together together is gonna to make this a, a stiffer car, but more predictable for what I like to do for driving. Um, if you put just those subframe braces in by itself, you may or may not notice a difference uh, depending on how hard you push the car and what, you, you know, what you've noticed before you put them in. So, for example, taking the car right now out for a drive and explain to you guys, it's going to be a, a small change, but cumulative change with all the parts is going to make this car handle better. And that's what I'm trying to get. That's why I even have, you guys probably remember those tires that I put on a while back, those Falcon Azenas tires, or Falcon, Falcon, Falcon. Um, they're sticky. They're stickier than they need to be, but I'm trying to dial this car in. And, and I've got a long ways to go, and you could make arguments that I still have coil springs with these these simple shocks. I'm going to be doing stuff as I go and, and upgrading things as I get around to it um, and just kind of chipping away as I can and as the budget allows. I mean, like I mentioned before, I bought these bars partly because of the price. They are cheaper bars. 
but they work, they get the job done. And there, are there better bars? Absolutely, if I could afford them, I would. I think for what I like to do and the kind of car I'm building, they're a good bar and I think I'm gonna be fine. They were great on the last car, didn't have any problems with them. Put them on here, I'm sure it's gonna be the same thing. So guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.